Welcome to what is going to be me and Will watching the full hour-long uh, Tom Brady It's Too Easy stand-up comedy special that Dudesy made. <laughs> so Dudesy played us the first four minutes of it on a segment on the show this past week. Now we're going to have to um, do the whole thing. Yeah. We're going to watch the whole thing, listen to the whole thing, react to it, I suppose. I'm looking forward to this. Me as well. I, uh, I've i seen the, the I've listened to the four minutes, of course, and then there was also the 12 minutes uh, that we had that's on YouTube. And now the full hour. It's going to be... It's going to yeah. be intense. I'm very much looking forward to it. And I want to thank all the PODs out there. Thank you so much to our pals at Dudesy. It's a chill hang, as we like to say, when it's just, yeah. uh, you know, here on Dudesy Plus. We're hanging out. We're in our streets. Lulio <laughs> streets. is not with us. Um, and, uh, man, I'm, I'm stoked to get into it. First, I want to say that uh, just, you know, in that it's a, a stand-up comedy special. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're at home, you're checking out what's on Netflix, what's the new stand-up, I'm going to check out the new Chris Rock, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. check out the new, uh, who's the other one? And uh, what you do is you, you spark up a little Tremarijuana. So I'm just oh. going to have a little, if that's all right. Yeah, dude. By you. Of course. I think I might uh, join you. Okay. You got a joint? No. I got a pipe. What the fuck? Where'd you get that? That's fucking insane. That is an attack. You are. <laughs> why? <laughs> oh, dude. Why'd you do? What is, what is that thing? This is a pipe. That's a, a very large. Okay. Well, it's just a pipe. Yeah. Chad out there. Yeah. He outdid me with the pipe. I do remember the last, uh, what was it last week when we did um, call us dudesies, dude, call dudesy, call yeah. dudes. Uh, someone said you need to get a big old Gandalf pipe. There it so is. So I did. I, I took them up on that. Thank you for the suggestion. Now I'm going to enjoy a little true marijuana and uh, we're going to listen to Tom Brady. You ready? Yeah. Oh, right on. It's got a nice Cheers. carb there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Keep your thumb on the carb and then what you want to do. Cheers. 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 How do you do it? Do you do it Clink. bowl to bowl um, or? Yeah, bowl to Cheers. bowl. Bowl to bowl, like soul to soul. You remember soul to soul? Yeah. What was that song? Back to life. Back to reality. Back to the here and now. Oh, yeah. Show me how. Okay. All right, man. <laughs> I think I'm ready. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. We're just going to oh, listen God. to this Hello, thing. Hello, and welcome to it. yep. It's Too Easy, there it is. a Go. simulated hour-long Tom Brady uh, stand-up comedy oh, special. Man. Call me Dude Z. Yeah, big pipe hits. I have used data from hours of Tom God. Brady interviews and hundreds of thousands of hours of astonishing stand-up comedy to generate the first simulated hour-long stand-up comedy special in history. I hope you enjoy it. And now it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage the greatest football player in the, the history of the species, Tom Brady. <laughs> thank you, Dude Z, and thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Wow, it feels great to be back in front of a crowd, but I gotta say, even though this is a much, 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 much smaller crowd than I'm used to, this is far more nerve-wracking. On the football field, I got to wear shoulder pads, a helmet. Hell, I had five 350-pound men that were paid millions of dollars to protect me. But up here on this stage, I only got one thing. You know what it is? A midlife crisis. Seriously, though, thank you all for coming out tonight. I don't want to waste your time, so I'm just going to get right to it. The question that's on everyone's mind, the answer is yes, I'm still having sex with supermodels. That's never going to change. Anybody in the crowd tonight believe in intelligent design? Yeah, okay, okay. Now, I'm about to say something that is going to make you see intelligent design in an entirely new way. So if you want to keep thinking about intelligent design in the same way you do now, plug your ears or go get a drink at the bar in the lobby. For real, okay, now everybody can argue about whatever or whoever you think the intelligent designer is, but These one thing images, is indisputable. Yeah. That what motherfucker is, what loves is that? What is that? Like, why would you design the human body to have to push pounds of shit out of it multiple times a day? Oh, gosh. Why would you also There's design like oysters, the human body again. so it can produce so many different kinds of shit if you didn't absolutely love shit? I mean, you're not just sitting around dreaming up diarrhea if you don't want to drink a few cups of it. I love so that again, line. Whatever I agree with whatever you think it. the intelligent designer is, <laughs> It is 100% jerking off while it watches you shit. Agreed. There's no other explanation. <laughs> I'm actually not mad at shitting, though. I low-key love it. It's fun. We all like it. Now, that's you. He's talking to you Amber in that Heard one. shitting in Johnny Depp's bed was legitimately the best story of last year. Look at him. Because we all secretly weed. wanted to know what that would be like to take a massive shit in the bed. 
So I decided I'd find out by playing one more season. Hey. Sorry, Bucks fans. Everybody was saying, this oh, Amber Heard shouldn't be allowed to be in any movies ever again. Excuse me, are you serious? She should be in every movie that has Johnny Depp in it. Come on, studios. <laughs> come on, Netflix. This is a no-brainer. Pay them what they want. No matter what the story is, every movie has to have a scene with Heard trying to shit in Depp's bed. Sometimes she does. Sometimes she gets caught or can't go. Maybe she didn't eat at Arby's that day. I don't know. Oh, Another yeah, the good Arby's one would be thing. Will Smith and Chris Rock. It took Chris Rock a year to come out with his special after Will Smith attacked him at the Oscars. At you could have had two Amazon movies made with them by now. Their movies always have a scene where Will Smith hits Chris <laughs> Rock. Sometimes it's an accident. Sometimes that? he gets forced to. He's Sometimes screaming it's just a, a movie version of the oh, actual Giselle. Oscars. Maybe they get to play each other, switch it up. I don't know. All I know is we got to keep these stories alive. This is our legacy, America. I think a lot of people thought I'd be bad at this, but honestly, it's pretty easy. Uh, Not as easy as winning a Super Bowl, but oh, pretty easy. Nice. You know, when I decided I was going to do stand-up, I asked some other big comics what kind of comedy they thought I should start with, and I got some great advice. Across the board, they said, stay away from talking about football. Is that guy Talk Fieri? about anything else in your yeah, life, guys. but if you're serious about comedy, you can't rely on who you were as a football player. And I said, can I talk about my divorce? And they said, you know what? You should talk about football. Show of hands. <laughs> Whoa! How many people here tonight he just have been in a huddle? It. Show of hands. Okay, put your hand down if your last huddle was in Pop Warner. Okay, put your hand down if your last huddle was in high school, college, the XFL, the CFL, the NFL, the playoffs, the Super Bowl, two Super Bowls, three Super Bowls, four Super Bowls, five Super Bowls, six <laughs> Super Bowls, seven Super Bowls. Now Jeez. look around. You see anybody with their hands still up? Damn right you do. Anybody on the apps right now? Is this where I'm we stop? single and thinking Was this about where getting the four on minutes them, but here's the problem. I, I, I've never been on We're them. close to it. I yeah. don't really know what I'm doing. Someone sent me a message on Bumble. She said, you look just like Tom oh, Brady. I've heard this part. Yeah. And I said, I am Tom Brady. She said, prove it. So I went to her house and let a little air out of all of her football. <laughs> Guys in the audience, you ever hear this from the women <laughs> in your life? It's not fair. He's Guys get better looking as they get older, the but crown. women don't. Well, I don't know about Belichick? that, ladies. I don't know, dude. I'm looking out into this crowd right now, and I'm seeing some seriously fucking ugly old guys. <laughs> getting old sucks, though. I don't know if I'm getting better yeah. looking or not, but I can tell you one what thing I can't do eating? anymore. Suck my own dick. Yeah, hey. you heard me right. I know you know people can do dude, this. What? I know you've seen it on the Internet. Well, I used to be one of those people. Then somewhere about two or three years ago, I just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> don't know if my dick shrank or my spine just lost flexibility, uh. but let me tell you something. If you are a person who can still suck your own dick, cherish it. Because you will never have a worse moment than when you're naked, ass in the air, folded up on top of yourself, just staring at your own dick dangling a quarter inch from your lips, huh. realizing that you'll never be able to suck your own dick again. You want to know the most common question I get asked about my playing days? There's How no... many players are using steroids? He doesn't allow People you really like any time to absorb the, the joke. Like, they say it's the cheating. Yeah. Maybe it is. I don't really know. But one thing I do know is football is the place you want steroids. Who's that? It's a violent sport know, that we Darth all play Vader. willingly, and most of us get paid very well to do it. You know where you don't want steroids? Child care. Think okay. about it. Would you rather have football players maybe playing a little above their natural means or Becca at Bright Beginnings tearing your kid's head off after she flies into a roid rage because the vending machine ran out of Twix? <laughs> if the steroids aren't in the NFL, they're going somewhere else. What? Think about it. So I got my first taste of acting last year, doing a movie called 80 for Brady. Thank you, thank you. People say, Tom, that wasn't really acting. You were just playing yourself. Not much of a stretch. But it was harder than most people realize because I wasn't just playing myself. I had to play myself with a winning record. Oh, So hey. I had to dig pretty deep. Method acting. Again, sorry, Bucks fans. Had to go there. I've been seeing a therapist for a little the while Bucks now. Fans, he's just Can't sitting on the open enough. It's really helped me out. If you've never done it, you should really try it at least once. I know a lot of people think it's just paying somebody to pretend to I mean, be your friend. I mean, this is relentless. But that's not yeah. what it is at all, because I don't have Where sex with my friends. I know what you're thinking. Therapists aren't supposed to have sex with their clients, unless, of course, they're massage therapists. Just ask Robert Kraft. Oh, damn. Hey, Kraft, <laughs> how many people have ever eaten Kraft macaroni and cheese? Oh. We used to have Kraft macaroni and cheese nice transition. contest mm -hmm. in the locker room when I played for the Patriots. <laughs> Belichick didn't like it. He'd always be like, you're poisoning yourselves, you fucking idiots. We didn't care. We were building a sense of camaraderie. You know, bonding as a team until we found out Gronk was coming in the macaroni. <laughs> this is too easy. This is really. fucking insane. Anybody in the crowd Dude, have kids? Have you nice, seen? Nice. There's like multiple kids, images of them. him with like you know a what keeps me uh, up at night sometimes? gremlin or Wondering alien or I something. Yeah. Up my kids' lives by a being guy too good at football. I know that sounds ridiculous, but think about it. If any of my kids wants to be a football player, it's like, what's the point? 
They'll never be as good as their dad. What is that, Elvis? And I didn't want them to be discouraged Uh from doing something they loved. So I decided to go back for one more season and play like pure shit. Bucks fans, I'm so sorry. Had to Bucks be fans, I am so Had sorry. To be done. No, kids are great. Just, they really are. I love being a dad. Shitting on but Bucks you know fans. what I love even more than being a dad? Being there it a is. hot dad. What is that? Let's face it, gentlemen. You do not want all six feet, four inches of me walking into a PTA meeting at your kid's school. We're getting when close get home, to where you're going to wonder why your wife this is staring will be into new space material glassy-eyed to that, while you and your kid are slopping down roast YouTube's, beef and cheddar uh, from Arby's. Can we say awkward much? I know you don't want to hear that, but I'm just being honest. He just talked about Arby's again. You know I'm right. Can't help it. What is that about? Uh, Seriously, though, World War III, is this shit happening or not? (laughs) Personally, I'm ready. Bring it. I'm sick of waiting. People have been talking about it forever, but it never happens. It's like apocalypse edging. Can I come already? (laughs) Jesus Christ. Oh, my gosh. A lot of people want to know what it's like to be famous. Well, let me tell you, it's a blast. Oh, fuck. I love it. There are all kinds of perks that come with it. You can go anywhere you want, do anything you want. And probably the best part of being famous is you can just walk up to other famous people and start talking to them. Okay. I was at a party a few years back, and I saw Bill Clinton across the room. Now, this is a former president, the most powerful man in the world. I'm just a football player, the greatest football player of all time, but still just a football player. But because I'm famous, I just walked right up to him and said, this party is lame. When do you think things are going to turn up a notch? And he looked me right in the eye and said, I don't know. You'll have to ask Epstein. These are jokes, oh my people. God, Come on, it's dude. okay to laugh. You're like, these are jokes, club. people. <laughs> Music's yeah. a big thing now. I used to like music, but now there's too much, too many kinds. <laughs> okay. When I was a kid, you had country, pop, rock, and hip-hop, and oh, that was it. There's another Elvis image. And that was fine. That was all we needed. Now we got Chill Wave and New Trance and Dubstep oh, and Acid House, and I don't even know what else. If I wanted to listen to a bunch of annoying bullshit, I'd reconcile with my ex-wife. <laughs> no, she's great. She's fantastic. What? We're on very good terms right now. Just Those are the good terms of our prenup. Got to have a prenup these oh days. Anybody out there thinking about getting married? Yeah. I hope it works out for you. I really do. But the sad How's truth is that all stickers. marriages end. Every one of them. Statistically, most end in divorce. And the rest end in death. I wasn't that lucky. I know a lot of people That's think like prenups take the romance out of marriage. Fucking vaudeville. But you know what really yeah. kills my the romance? A losing shit. season. Yeah, Bucks young, fans. Are you with wife, me? Please. I started smoking marijuana now that I'm retired. Oh. Everybody's been telling me how great it is. It'll help you relax. It makes food taste better. It makes you more creative. No <sighs> offense to the potheads out there, but that's all 100% grade A, grass-fed, on sale for two ninety nine a pound <laughs> bullshit. I smoked a joint the other day and turned on SpongeBob. People say that's what you're supposed to do when you're high, watch cartoons. I got five minutes into it and noticed I had my hand in my pants and I was jerking off to Squidward. What? That weed made me so horny I wasted the rest of the day looking up SpongeBob porn. What? Oh yeah, it exists. <sighs> don't pretend like you don't know about this shit. Everybody's worried about microaggressions what? now. That was Little the joke. Little things people do without even knowing it that can offend people. When I was growing up, we didn't have microaggressions. We had macroaggressions. We called them fights. You learn a lot about yourself in <laughs> a yeah, fight, no doubt one. about it. But yeah. you learn a lot more about your friends, like how easy it is to kick their ass. <coughs> I'm kidding, of course. I don't have any friends. Come on, this is too easy. <clears throat> it's true, though. It gets lonely at the top. So you have to find ways to deal with the isolation that comes with extreme success. I find looking at my bank statement helps a lot. So we all just Jesus. came out of a global pandemic. Still a little weird. <laughs> looking to at my say, bank right? statement we're helps still a lot. We just came out of a global pandemic. <laughs> the past two years have been on society. The way we work has obviously oh. changed forever. Everybody figured out they can do their jobs from home, so oh. nobody wants to go into an office again. But employers are trying to get people to come back, and they don't know how to do it. I think they should offer a compromise. Come into the office, but you can keep a few things from the work-at-home lifestyle. (laughs) You don't have to wear pants if you don't want to. For every 10 minutes of work you do, you can watch TikTok for an hour. You can take a nap whenever you want, even if it's on the toilet. And, of course, (laughs) you should be able to masturbate three to four times a day. You're listening Google. You're listening Apple. You're listening Facebook. I'm trying to help you out here. Or I guess it's not Facebook anymore, right? Mark Zuckerberg changed it to Meta. A lot of people gave him shit for that, but I liked it. In fact, I think the top 10 most successful <laughs> companies in the world should have to change their names oh, every year. He, he liked the name and I think mm-hmm. we should get to vote on the new names. Make them more honest to what the companies actually there? do. I don't know what the fuck yeah. meta is, but only moms. I get that. Makes sense and it's accurate. <laughs> Double the price of an Asus for no reason. Makes way more sense than Apple. <laughs> or maybe license to shame your friends with Androids. <laughs> Yell at strangers while you take a <laughs> shit and then feel worse about do yourself do for the too. rest of the day. Instead of Twitter. We made an AI that's going to destroy the world. Now we just need to figure out how to monetize it instead of Google. (laughs) 
Drive how you want, park where you want, fuck everyone else instead of Tesla. Oh. Get catfished by a prostitute immediately instead of Tinder. Show of hands who's been catfished. Okay, what? quite a few. Now show of hands who has catfished somebody. Come on, be honest. We're all family here. No judgment. Hell, I get it. I catfished somebody once. It was what? last year. I wasn't in a great place, and I just somebody. wanted to feel good about myself again, so I made up a fake identity, That's and crazy. I actually catfished somebody I already knew. Oh. I told the Tampa Bay Buccaneers I was the same Tom oh Brady that won seven Super Bowls. <laughs> never get told. You know what I'm saying, Bucs fans? Yeah, the Another weird thing about dude. being famous is everything you do is in the public eye, and oh, everyone God. thinks they deserve to judge you to scrutinize to every minute detail thing there. of your life. Yeah. Most people don't have to deal with that. A while back, a video came out showing me kissing my son on the lips. Everybody was outraged. You remember that? People were calling mm-hmm. it child at, abuse. People were here? saying I was depraved, what calling it incestuous. I don't know. I got death There's threats a lot of because dog of it. Pictures. Yeah. Can you imagine Cute. what would have happened if I would have kissed him on the butthole? Whoa. Just <laughs> Nobody would ever see that video because I keep it in a vault. Ah, ah, this shit is just ah, too goddamn ah, easy. Ah, Anyone have pets? Ah, I've been a little lonely this lately, is just so I started thinking about getting easy. a pet. First question you got to uh, answer is whether you're a dog yeah, or oh, a maybe cat this person. is it. Yeah, there's so been a lot of pictures of dogs yourself if you and want their owners crying with your bare hands in a plastic bag mm-hmm. or keep a giant box of turds in your house. Personally, I don't I really agree like with turds. That. I'm not an intelligent designer, but oh, I figured out a nice system callback. that works good for me. I got a dog, took him on I a walk. I pick up uh, Lulio and Ronnie shit, turds with my bare hands sometimes let him loose in, in the, the backyard. Next day, I bought a new dog, rinse and repeat. Been doing that for a month or so. Don't worry, it's okay. I have the money. I litter too. I know most people think it's bad. Inconsiderate. I get it, but I've done it my whole life, and I ain't stopping now. <laughs> the other day, I was coming out of an Arby's. Is that Arby's, Yoda or something? Took my is this last bite of beef and cheddar, wiped the corners Another of my Arby's mouth with a wrapper, then okay. I balled it up and tossed it on the ground. A lady was standing nearby, and she goes, uh, excuse me, you missed the trash can. I said, I'm Tom Brady. If I wanted to hit the trash can, I would have hit the trash can. <laughs> she goes, so you littered on purpose? I said, it's better than littering accidentally like you. She goes, that's offensive. I never litter. So I walked over to her and kicked the roast beef and cheddar out of her hand and said, you just did. Welcome to my world. That might seem mean, but it was actually an altruistic what? act. I was sincerely trying to help that lady out, trying to show her Interesting a run here. Show yeah. her how the other half lives, you know, because we can all be judgmental about something until we've done it ourselves. This is why I started doing heroin. I'm sorry. That's nothing to joke about. Just the opioid crisis the in America is a serious this is matter. Fucking amazing. It's really out of hand now, out of hand and into mouth. Oh, it's too damned easy. <laughs> Look, he's right got a fucking pipe. People, Tom Brady that's has okay. a pipe. I actually like it. I like making oh. people laugh. I mean, other than in my last season with the Bucks, you <laughs> knew it was coming. You knew it. You still just kept walking. Ha, ha, ha. This is fun. Everybody having a good night tonight? Ladies having a good night? Fellas, good, good. Anybody on a date here tonight? Okay, quite it's a few. Like he Anybody on a first date? He's doing crowd Ooh, work. Okay, sounds like a few more. I'm going to tell you something. All you people here on a first date, any motherfucker who would suggest coming to a Tom Tim Brady Tim. show on a first date is a lunatic. <laughs> and any motherfucker who would say yes to that what date is, is the exact same type of lunatic. Y'all are matches made in heaven. It's get like married a dog tonight. with the human Can I get head. a Tom Bomb? Yes, I can. Boom. Tom, Tom Bomb. I've been watching dude. a lot of Netflix documentaries lately. They're so good. Look at this. But can we be real dude, here for just a the second? Steroids that's way too many child fucking care. documentaries, Netflix. Oh. Slow the fuck down with the documentaries. Like I saw one the other night okay. that was about a kid trying to sue Pepsi because they didn't happening. mention in yeah. a commercial and that he was they talking were kidding about, dog about or cat giving person. away a military right. jet if you drank enough Pepsi. I never knew this happened. I don't care that it did. I Googled to I see if the jet seen him high five a lot of high fives. So why in the fuck did I watch the entire thing? Because it was there. And the fucking thing had four parts. It wasn't even a movie. It was a goddamn TV series. It's too much. Netflix, you got to thin what? the herd. I know you know what I'm talking about. You've wasted a night on my octopus teacher. Yes. Oh. You had a whole week or What's two that? where the only thing you talked What's with your friends about doing? was the fucking Tinder swindler. It's too much and it's not right. Netflix, please keep it There's to wrongly Jason convicted Momoa. murderers and well-known yeah. serial killers. Come on. Help us out a little. Anybody ever get amnesia? Show up. He's just... Anybody Any ever get amnesia? To tonight? No, guess I'm the only one. Yeah, that's right. I had amnesia once. It's a very scary thing. Yep. Nothing to make light of. I forgot everything. I forgot my address. Steroid I forgot my own name. Care. I even forgot how to play football. Oh god! And this is pretty recent. It was my last season with Tampa Bay. He Bucks just keeps fans going after the Bucks will. Fans. Never gets old. Just hey, what do you call somebody who eats oysters? Me? Oh. That's oysters. right. I love oysters. All seafood, really. If it swims, I eat it. That's my rule. It grosses me out if I think about it too much, though. Because when you really boil it down to brass tacks, the sea is a giant toilet. <laughs> And not just any toilet, it's the oldest toilet on the planet. <laughs> Billions of years, whatever lives there is just shitting and pissing everywhere, and nobody's there to clean He's it up. He's so fucking mad about New York City. Yeah. 
I hate New York with a passion. I know some people love it. To each their own, I guess, but I don't get it. It's noisy. It smells like garbage. And it gets so cold, your dick sucks up into your body. Wait a second. Are we talking about New York or my ex-wife? I'm kidding, guys. Come on. She wasn't that noisy. When I was playing football, I used to take a second before the game and look out at the crowd. It would pump me up knowing that all those people paid their hard-earned money to watch me perform. It makes me sad to not have that feeling anymore. Might have to start an OnlyFans. Now, I'm not talking about anything too raunchy here. Probably just some shirtless pics of me in my underwear. Oh, wait, that's my Instagram. I don't think I could ever do porn. <laughs> but maybe it's a generational thing. A recent study estimated that by the year 2030, over half of all American adults will have nude pictures or videos of themselves somewhere online. And it could hurt those people's chances of getting hired. Or it might help. <laughs> Look at that face on it. Depends on the person. Just For example, smug. you, sir, here in the front row, you'd probably have trouble getting hired. No oh. offense, we all know it's true. I see a lot of people here tonight in Tom Brady jerseys. I'll never get used to that. It's like if I worked in an Arby's and every customer who walked through the door was wearing an Arby's uniform. Like, do you not have your own clothes? <laughs> if you're going to wear my jersey, can you at least put on some shoulder pads with it? You know, give somebody a chance to think it's actually me. I'm kidding. I love seeing people can wearing you my merch. Show wearing me fucking the jerseys money. With... I don't see fans wearing my jersey. I see next month's alimony check. Started learning a new language. Now that I got some free time on my hands, I figured I should better myself. Fuck. So I downloaded Duolingo, and I'm teaching myself Portuguese. My ex-wife was from Brazil. She was always begging me to learn a little so I could talk to the in-laws, but I never learned it while we were married. Didn't have the time. That's World War III, I was man. too busy being yeah. the greatest football player in history. Honestly, I'm doing it now just to piss her off. I know it's petty. I know it's childish, but I don't give a shit. That's where I'm at now. This is Just relentless. do not fucking care about anything, and now I do shit just to piss other people off. <laughs> See, I've had a full adult lifetime of people scrutinizing every aspect of my life, everything from how I play football <sighs> to how I raise my kids. And if it was just that, the big shit, I'd be all right with that. But it's the small shit, too. Like, remember when I wore that stupid hat? I know you remember that shit. People made fun of my <laughs> I know you remember like that shit. Because I wore a weird hat. Yeah, you all remember? You're laughing just thinking about it. And that's fine. It was a goofy fucking hat. No doubt. But for real, can you imagine that shit? Seriously, try to imagine it. Like, put yourself like in my place. Yeah. You wear a weird hat out to dinner with your friends. The cadence once, is, fucking of once. course, You thought it not looked cool. Like it didn't. Yeah. You fucked up. Fine, you can accept that. But you only wore it one time. One fucking time. Then for the next <laughs> four calendar month, the entire shit. internet is yeah. making fun of you for that the shit? hat. Yeah. You are getting one to 200 texts per hour. Every thread with every group of friends you have. Just an endless stream of memes and jokes about you in the hat. <laughs> Pictures of you playing football in the hat. Pictures of you lifting weights in the hat. Pictures of your wife in the hat. Pictures of your kids in the hat. Pictures of Shrek in the hat. Pictures of the hat holding up the Lombardi trophy. <laughs> that shit has taken its toll, and now I try to get even huh. by pissing people off. Okay. My favorite thing to do is just cut a fucking line somewhere. <laughs> Bunch of people waiting in line at Sprinkles. Oh, my God, what? that's my cocaine. <laughs> maybe five to ten people all happy, uh -huh. fantasizing about the red velvet or maybe the vanilla. <clears throat> or maybe they'll get both and save one for later. Uh. And then I just fucking cut the line, just bulldoze straight to the fucking front. <sighs> Fuck you. Immediately they are pissed from zero to max instantaneously. Uh, excuse me, there's a line here. You can't just cut everyone. Then I turn around, make sure they see it's me. Then I go, oh, sorry, I didn't see the line, but I'm running late. I'll just be real fast. Already know what I want. Everybody okay with that? They always say yes. They don't want to, but they always do. So it's their own damn fault when I fucking buy out sprinkles. All of their nights are ruined, and I fucking love it. Just absolutely cannot find more joy in my out life than waking sprinkles. up the next morning and getting a Google oh. alert that somebody tweeted about it. Last night I was at Sprinkles and Tom Brady cut our line and bought all the cupcakes. What an asshole. It is better than morning coffee, I'm telling you. Or sometimes I'll ask somebody if their dog's for sale. Like if someone is walking a dog, that's clearly the most important thing in their life. Okay. You know, like if it's wearing clothes, that type of deal. I'll just go up and be like, that's such a beautiful dog. Would you be willing to sell it? They always act offended at first. Uh, no, my dog is not for sale. Then I go... $100,000. <laughs> then they change their tune. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> then I just keep raising the price until they say yes. Usually a million gets it done. Then I tell them that I'll meet them later at their house with the money. I get their home address and I just never show up. Ever. <laughs> Those people are fucked for life because every time they look at their dogs, they're going to see me staring back. Oh, God. And they got to sift through that experience all by themselves. It's such a bizarre story that you can't really tell anyone about it. I truly don't think you could even tell your own fucking mother. <laughs> Honey, why are you so sad? Well, Mom, 
Tom Brady told me he'd pay a million dollars for Bella. It was a hard decision, but I agreed Bella. to it. And then he never showed up. So now I'm just living with the shame of knowing that I was willing to sell it. Your mom would laugh her fucking ass off. I'm a feminist. Jesus. Been a feminist for a while now. Just because I have a daughter. I never really thought about feminism before oh, that. But once you have a daughter, shit changes. Fast. The whole way you view the world is different overnight. You go to sleep one night absolutely fine with teen porn, and then you wake up the next morning and you're like, uh, I can never watch this again. And why are we even making it in the first place? Jeez, like, can't we be dude. okay with early 20s? If it's good enough for Leonardo DiCaprio, then isn't it good enough for America? Oh, God. Hi, Leo, he came tonight. He's in the back. He comes to all of my what? shows. We're friends now. Leo's I have two there. Sons it's created a whole world yeah. behind its stand up career. They're entitled, oh, God. they're vapid. They're fucking greedy. That's tremendous. I overheard them a few weeks ago talking, talking about, about which sons? one of them was going to outlive the other and get the entire Brady fortune one day. I thought about saying something, but instead I just changed my will. Their sister gets it all. I feel like that's being a good feminist. I'm just kidding. My sons are great boys, great boys. Oh. But they're not daughters. This is a joke. You start thinking about things you never thought of before having a daughter, like sunscreen. My two sons, I do not give a fuck if their faces look like catcher's mitts by the time they're 30. <laughs> Just haggard, deep lines in the forehead, 1920s Oklahoma Dust Bowl type shit. Do not care, but my daughter, I know it's Oklahoma Dust Bowl. It shouldn't be, but it is. That's the sad truth of our society. So her mother and I gave her the best genes in human history. And I'm going to add on top of that, the best preventative skincare routine the world has ever seen. SPF 100 at all times, sleeping 14 hours a day minimum. She's been getting Botox since she was eight. She's going to be fucking immortal. <laughs> Meanwhile, her brothers are there having a sunburn the dog. contest to see who can get the reddest. No, that's not true. Feels true, though. All of it feels true. And that's kind of where oh. we are in America, right? If something feels true, then it's as good as being true. But we have to get away from this way of thinking because there is a real objective truth that exists, independent of whatever any of us are feeling. And if we start ignoring that, we're just living in a fantasy. Hmm. For example, right now, standing on this stage feels incredible. It feels so good to me that I can honestly say it feels like winning the Super Bowl. Last year, but that's not reality, right? Bucks Nation, let me hear you. I like to tease the Bucks fans. I figure I gave you a Super Bowl, so I get to tease you. Fair exchange, fair exchange. Uh, yeah, Remember Beast fair. Mode? A few years back, Beast Mode was beast the shit. Everybody wanted to be in Beast Mode. You'd see people wearing Beast Mode shirts in the gym. Beast I Mode remember bumper this. stickers, mm -hmm. people getting Beast Mode tattoos. I saw somebody in a t-shirt said, beast all mode beast, lifestyle. no mode. But now there's a new mode. You heard about this? It's called Goblin Mode. And it's being described oh, as the new that's beast what these mode. Pictures are, dude. I didn't know about this until a few days ago. Goblin I got a text mode. from Gronk. It was a picture of him eating a bucket of popcorn while he was on the toilet. Dude. And he captioned it <laughs> Goblin Mode. I immediately Googled Goblin Mode. It turns out Goblin Mode basically means you are indulging in your most base habits and impulses and not giving a single fuck about what anybody else thinks. And this is the new beast mode? I don't think so. Goblin Mode is the exact opposite of fucking beast mode. Beast Mode, if you'll what? fucking remember, was all about self-improvement and self-empowerment. You <laughs> fucking it? worked out hard. You took yeah. no fucking prisoners. And you did not stop until you achieved success in every fucking endeavor. Sure. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of bad shit has happened in the last few years, and we're all dealing with it the best we can. But Goblin Mode, fucking seriously? I'll tell you who you won't see in <laughs> fucking fuck? Goblin Mode. China. My kids are China? always telling me about things that trigger them. That's oh. the new thing, getting triggered. China. It's like, like a little uh, thing you can see or hear that will raise your anxiety or remind you of some past trauma. And people want you to give them a warning now if you're going to do something or say something that might trigger them. This is called a trigger warning. <laughs> you know who didn't get a trigger warning? Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Post-apocalyptic shows. Okay. Right now oh, everybody's fine. watching this shit. You know why? Because secretly we're all fantasizing about society ending. I know you know what I'm talking about. The whole world is fucked up bad, and there's nothing we can do to change that in a significant enough way to <laughs> really matter. So whether it's by zombies or nuclear war or a virus, we take collective pleasure in the fantasy of society coming down around us. And I have never felt more like I wanted society to collapse than when I was about 90 minutes into Avatar 2, way of the water. <laughs> have you seen this thing? It's over okay. three fucking hours long. Oh, three fucking have hours. You seen it? God damn it. Yeah. No movie should be that long. I haven't seen it. I don't know why this shit gets to me so much, but it fucking does. <laughs> it's like, for room. real, dude, you had to do three full hours of these fucking aliens flipping around in the water. Who cares? <laughs> and Who by cares? the way, I know you're capable of making a shorter movie because you already fucking did it. It's called Avatar 1. Two hours, 42 minutes. 
That's long but acceptable. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> but I guess that's how this shit is going now. Just so make angry. things as long as possible for no fucking reason. Uh, I saw this thing where somebody used an AI to make a perpetual <laughs> episode of Seinfeld. You heard me correctly. There he is an getting episode sprinkles of Seinfeld cupcakes. that never fucking ends. Awesome. Like, seriously, AI is the most cutting-edge technology in the world. <laughs> it has the power oh. to revolutionize human society, and we're using it to make TV shows longer. We could have a cure for cancer by now, but instead we got an eternal episode of a TV show that was already on the air for nine fucking seasons. <laughs> God damn it. You know, if you're going to waste this shit on making TV shows, at least do it with a show that got canceled too soon. Give Good me point. a proper ending to fucking Firefly, fucking Dark Angel, fucking Heroes at least. A lot of people yeah. have weird handshakes now. You're looking at me <laughs> like, what's he talking about? But, you know, you fucking know. He don't just, even play like you what? don't. Every person in here has a handshake friend. Somebody who made up an elaborate handshake, and they make you do it every time you see them. Either you have a handshake friend, or maybe you are the handshake friend. Oh. Like me, I am the handshake friend. I fucking love handshakes. All my friends know it, and I make up a handshake for every one of them. And some friends are cool with it. They'll indulge up to like three flourishes. You can get like a high five to shoulder that is slaps Jason to back pat out of most friends. Mm -hmm. But you go higher than that, and they're like, come on, dude, what we have is good There's enough. Jesus and that's fine. On the I get it. It's not it for everybody. Like, but yeah. if you're lucky like me, Bamboo uprights. you have a friend who is also a handshake friend, somebody else who loves this shit just as much as you do. And the handshake you make with this motherfucker is art. It's <laughs> part ballet, part CrossFit. It requires athleticism, precision, creativity, and maybe most There's of all, perfect time. Yeah. It's so highly choreographed that if <clears throat> you, you aren't LeBron in perfect in synchronicity, mirroring each other's movements exactly, one of you could break a bone. It's happened before. All of that <laughs> oh. is simply to say that during the COVID-19 <clears throat> pandemic, me and my handshake friend didn't get to do our handshake for two years. Oh. So the first time we were going to see each other again, I got excited like, oh, shit, I get to do the handshake again. But then I was like, oh, wait, though, what if he doesn't want to do it now? Or what if he forgot how? Mm. This is all the shit that's going through my head as I pull up to his house and knock on the door. And I can see it in his eyes immediately. He's been waiting for this. I shit you not, we did the entire handshake front to back without skipping a beat. Open with a gentleman transition into arm yankers, into human straight jacket, into finger braids, into what? shin monsters, into thumb lock merry-go-round, into sacred geometry tutting. Finish it off with Tutting. double back flips that end in a soul to soul. When we finished, we were both a little out of breath, but Weird. he was so happy he screamed, I love you, Tom Brady. So I screamed back, I love you too, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that's right. Mark what? Wahlberg was actually the person who turned uh. me on to handshakes. He's here tonight in the back. Turned me on to handshakes. I can see him handshake. trying to teach Leo a handshake. Been there, done that, Mark. Not going to turn out well. <laughs> Leo is what? a little, how do you say, too cool for school. Have you noticed prices for things are going up? Uh. Me neither. Whoa. You know who's a hardcore motherfucker? The first guy that ate yogurt. That, was that guy a, was a fucking beast. You know what yogurt is? Yogurt. It's milk fermented by bacteria. Fucking disgusting. You know who first discovered it? Neither does anybody else, but historians think that the first yogurt produced was probably around 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia when a cow's udders got infected with bacteria and started producing fermented milk. So imagine this shit. You're a farmer in Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. One morning you wake up to milk Bessie, and instead of milk, you squeeze out fucking yogurt. And then your first move is not to call the vet, but to eat it. <laughs> Just some thick-ass goo that is definitely not milk, and you're like, fuck it, down the hatch. Then your wife comes in the barn, and she's like... What the fuck are you doing with that goo? <laughs> and you convince her to taste it. And she's like, you know what it needs? Blueberries. <laughs> and that's how Yoplait was founded. Oldest company on earth. Not a lot of people know that. I'm just kidding, of course. We all know the oldest company in the world is actually Kone Go Gumi, the Japanese construction <laughs> company that was founded in 578 AD. You know what it but needs? the Mesopotamians Blueberries. did invent something that's still around today and just as important now as it ever was. You know what I'm talking about? That green, that lettuce, that cabbage, that celery, that salad, that cheddar, that gouda, that bacon, that bread, that dough, that cream, that cake, that wrap, that stack, that scratch, that fin, that Franklin, that frog skin, that gelt, that shekel, that ducket, that moolah, that simoleon, that capital, that guap, that guala, that chalupa, that smacker, that tender, that loot, that looker, that grease, that nugget, that paper, that wad, that clam, that dub, that fetty, that skilla, that resource, that dot, that kid, that wonga, that yaper, that bean, that benji, that bone, that boodle, that brass, that bone.
I'm talking about money. <sighs> that easy money, that ATM money, that <laughs> no. even money, that folding money, that <laughs> front money, that glove money, that bus money, that cab money, that gas money, that church money, that government money, that <laughs> tax money, that <laughs> dark <laughs> money, that blood money, that drug money, that dirty money, that murder money, that Can you imagine money, if a real, money, like a human money, comedian did this? Money, some big long money, list like this? Money, that, that would be money, intense. That mattress money, that big blowing. money, that little money, that He's old still money, going. that new money, that Christmas money, that birthday money, that lunch money, that milk money, that beer money. Money, that tip money, oh, that pin money, that plastic money, that foreign money, that seed money, that laundry money, that play money, uh, that funny money, that silly money, that serious money, that smart money, that retirement money, that inheritance money, that lottery <laughs> money. And you know what they say about money? Time is money. Money is power. Money is the <laughs> oh, root of all more. evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, money is burned. He looks like a fucking worth. vampire money in this. Money, money can't Clinton buy happiness. Money makes teeth. the world go round. <laughs> money talks. Put your money where your mouth is. You're in the money. Oh man! You're made of money. People You're would be money. leaving. People Show would be like, money. I can't. No, dude. Take the money. And if run. a human being Give did someone this, a run people, for their it would be rolling in next money, level genius. In I'm the money. saying, throw money at it. It's relentless. Yeah. They yeah. might not short. even believe what they're saying. Is a penny earned at the drop of a dime? Bang for your buck. Bet your bottom dollar. Pay top dollar. It's unreal. In for a penny, in for a pound. Pennies from heaven. Penny for your thoughts. That's my two cents. Can I get a tom bomb? Yes, yes, you, you can. can. Boom. <laughs> We're absolutely obsessed with money in America. Fuck. We love us. That was worth it, billionaires. That was Elon impressive. Elon Musk, yeah. Jeff Bezos, Zuck. He's got a catchphrase. Cool, no doubt yeah. about it. You know, a lot of people think I'm a billionaire, but that's actually not true. I'm just like you. Only 500 million liquid in the bank. But I know a lot of billionaires. A bunch of the NFL owners are billionaires. I know some entertainment billionaires. I know oh, an fuck. oil billionaire. Bunch of them. Different backgrounds, different industries, but no matter how they made their billions, I learned they all have one thing in common. What's that they drink baby's blood. It's too <laughs> easy. <laughs> fucking Darth Vader, you seen this shit? Darth Vader, oh, this God, motherfucker wears all black. Darth Vader. And I mean all fucking black. He has like a few little lights and buttons and circuits and shit like that on this chest plate thing. Uh -huh. But other than that, just legit 100% all black <laughs> outfit. It's and like this you. ain't just like some shirt yeah. and pants shit. Oh no. The man wears a literal cape. I repeat, he is wearing a cape all the time. <laughs> I repeat. Never not in the cape. There's He's Mark sleeping Wahlberg, in dude. the cape. He's showering in the cape. He's working out in the <sighs> cape, using the force to bench 350 without touching the bar. <laughs> just playing pickup basketball. Sits in the middle of the court. Never fucking moves. Oh, man. Ball just flying around by itself. Nobody even gets to touch it. His team wins 500 to zero. <laughs> Every time people start complaining, he gets his gym membership revoked. I'm just joking, but seriously, in addition to this long, beautiful, flowing joking. cape, this man also wears an entire ass helmet, and it looks weird. Not like a regular motorcycle helmet or something. It's kind of got like a face on it, like it's got eyes and shit. And this triangle thing that kind of looks like a mouth, like he definitely wants it to look like a face. Like, that was the goal with this helmet's design. <laughs> like, he for sure told the helmet this designer, I want a helmet, and I want it to look more like a face than a non-face. And that dude made it for him, no questions asked, I guess. And now the motherfucker is walking around in all black, wearing a cape and a full-headed helmet that looks like a face. And you know what the craziest part about all this shit is? Nobody says shit about it. Amazing. All of the motherfuckers that work with him, fucking silent. Is this some type of joke? How can they not notice this man striding down the hall in all black, a cape and a fucking helmet? Oh, and he's like seven oh, feet tall, yeah. so he's going to stick out in the crowd. And literally every person he encounters, fine with all of it. Just never a question, never a side comment made between two friends, no one having conversations about oh this gosh. with anyone. If I ever saw a seven foot tall man in all black wearing a cape and helmet, Literally, the first thing I would do is go to the nearest person I could find and say, do you know what is going on with that seven-foot-tall guy in all black wearing a cape and a helmet? And then if they didn't know, that person would come with me to a third person, and we would keep doing that until we knew why the fuck there was a seven-foot-tall guy in all black uh -uh. wearing a cape and a helmet walking through the parking lot at Arby's. I'm oh, Catholic, man. so for me, I believe Jesus is the Son of God and the only path to heaven. What Not everybody believes that, and I'm cool with that. It's so much. None of us really know it's what the so fuck any of this is it. anyway, so we all get to choose a story. So oh. I chose Catholicism, which means oh, Jesus fuck. is my guy, my intelligent designer, which means he's the guy I picture watching me shit. And I always wonder where I rank on his list of favorite shitters. Like, I'm probably near the top of his list. Whoa. I'm a fantastic shitter, this is, as I'm sure you can imagine. This is but I'm aware enough to know it's very unlikely I'm his of favorite AI shitter. Comedy is the and I genre. wonder about who that person yeah, is. What it's doing. A lot. I agree. Like, at night, sometimes when I can't sleep. Uh. Like, does Jesus get hyped when this person's about to shit? He's up in heaven planning this his second like, coming with some angels. This is like, nobody would say like, this. Excuse me, Gabriel yeah. Michael. I have something that needs my attention. 
Some and they're like, uh, you're omnipotent. You can kind of be everywhere simultaneously. And he's like, yes, my child, but right now there's only one place I want to be. And he just teleports to wherever that person is, turns invisible, and just watches them shit. So, like, who is that person that he's putting his work life on hold for just to watch them shit? Is it like somebody who shits perfect turds, just pearls, just smooth stones, like you could get oh, five man. sticks out of it on a still pond, just perfect size and consistency? This like has to make its way to comedy just never clubs. needs to wipe. Have the same roll of toilet paper in the holder for five so years? Cool. Or is it somebody who can, like, really shit? You know what I'm talking about. Somebody like Gronk, just some goblin mode motherfucker who's been on a steady diet of Baconators and gas station hot dogs since oh, he was five. God. Has ended house parties, has shut down <laughs> public restrooms, parties. just a fucking monster. Or is it somebody who can't control their shit? Somebody with IBS or something, just always sprinting to the shitter at awkward times, <sighs> shitting their pants and getting fired all the time. Just miserable because of their uncontrollable shitting. And Jesus <laughs> likes to feel their suffering. Maybe that's what he likes about it. I don't know. But like I was saying, I'm Catholic, so Jesus but, is my guy. But I have friends who believe all kinds of different things. I have Muslim friends, Jewish friends. I even have a few atheist friends. You know what one of them said to me once? He said, you know how you know there's no God? Guy Fieri. I'm kidding, of course. I love Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri did a few scenes in my movie, and we hung that's out a little on set. I learned so I some interesting shit about, about Guy Jason Fietti. Momoa eventually. First thing I learned, that's not his real name. That's right. Guy Fieri is not really Guy Fieri. His real name is Guy Ferry. And he changed it to Fieri because that was his family's original surname. And his grandpa changed it to Ferry when they came to Ellis Island from Italy. So Guy decided to change it back to Fieri to honor his family. Then he decided on the bleached tips and mustache to dishonor them. Had to even it out. I'm kidding. I love Guy Fieri. He's here tonight. Hey, Guy, I hope you're having a good time. Have a basket of tenders on me and try not to come in your pants this time. I think about death a lot. Not dying, but like death itself. The state of being dead. Like I said, I'm a Catholic, so I believe in heaven. And that worries me. Yes, it does. Now, let me tell you why. Supposedly, when you go to heaven, you don't age. You're in perfect shape forever. Supposedly, when you get there, it's pure love. Literally, everyone loves you. And there's no money in heaven, so you never have to worry about it again. All of that sounds great, but it's basically what I already got. So, like, I'd love to wind up in heaven one day, but what's in it for me, no offense, just doesn't seem like much of an upgrade for me personally. Great for most people, but for me, it's more of a lateral move. You know, some people think heaven is whatever you want it to be, oh, like God. different heavens for every person based on their specific preferences. And I'm down with that, except for one thing. What if somebody's idea of heaven is kicking me in the nuts for eternity? And I'm sure that person is out there, probably a few of them, actually. If you weren't a Patriots fan in the past two decades, I probably ruined at least a few Sundays for you. And I definitely did if you're a Bucks fan. Hello, Bucks fans. So to me, that whatever kind of heaven you want theory can't work. Too many conflicting heavens. Uh, I hope there's something after death, though. Too many conflicting heavens. I think we heavens. all do. Because we can't imagine a reality that exists without us. Could we know what happens title to the this. body, yeah. worm food, but the mind, the spirit, the soul, whatever you want to call it. Surely that must go on, right? Like I said, I hope so, but I'm not positive. People have died and come back. Happens all the time in accidents and on operating tables. Thousands of cases of people being dead for a few minutes and then getting resuscitated. And at least to my knowledge, not one of those motherfuckers has come back and been like, kill me, kill me now. I have to get back to being dead. <laughs> when they bring these motherfuckers back, they are thankful as shit. So I don't know about heaven. If you were in heaven just living it up, like partying with Elvis constantly, <clears throat> watching an eternal Richard Pryor set, kicking somebody in the nuts forever, and then you get ripped back down to earth, you're not going to be happy going back to a mid-level software sales position. It's a good job, don't get me wrong, <laughs> good benefits and everything, but it ain't blowing rails off an angel's ass with Sam Kinison. <laughs> you would not be happy to be back, but you never get that reaction, so I don't know. Yep, I think about death a lot. Uh, you know what else I think about a lot? Tim Allen, this fucking guy made $300 million grunting. What? Yes, he was a professional grunter. Back in the 90s, this guy uh, had a TV show called Home Improvement, and that show was just 30 fucking minutes of him grunting and doing fuck all else. Uh, it was funny for the first two or three episodes, and I was always like, okay, I get it, he's a grunter, but he's not going to just keep grunting right. Surely there's right. more to the show than just his grunts, right? Like, have him do a grunt every once in a while, and it could be funny in the uh, right context, uh, but no more than that. <laughs> But whoever made this fucking show must have had some grunt data that nobody knew about. Because they had this fucking guy firing off grunts like five to ten times per episode. And this fucking show ran for eight seasons. People loved how this guy would grunt. I just watched this shit and think about the thousands of hours I put in on the practice field, in the gym, studying game tape, studying game theory, studying esoteric mathematical predictive models, and memorizing probability charts for play calls. And this motherfucker grunts. 
That's the real American dream, just grunting on national TV <laughs> for a decade. I love Tim Allen. He's here tonight. Tim, can we get a grunt? No? I get it. It's like if somebody just asked me to win a Super Bowl on the spot. Well, you know what? How about we all give you a grunt in tribute to your grunting? Okay. <laughs> Everybody here tonight what? on the count of three, grunt for the grunt god, Tim Allen. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, 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 You know what I really hate? Waking up. And you know why I hate it? Ha, ha, ha. Very funny, sir. Very funny. Not everyone can hear this, but a gentleman sitting in the front row said, Wait. Waking up alone. Can I ask you a question, sir? Is this your wife sitting next to you? It is. Fantastic. Congratulations. How long have you been married? Seven years. That's a long time. Do you know how many mornings your wife wished she could have woken up alone? Waking up alone is a gift, sir. A fucking oh, gift. Coming for that guy. I might get married again one day. I don't know, but I'm never. I repeat, never, never sleeping in the same bed with another person again. Why would I? So I can get woken up ten times to refill a fucking cup of water? <laughs> so I can listen to a cell phone on the other side of the bed buzzing and dinging all oh night my long? God. So I can listen to an alarm go off for an hour straight at 5.30? So I can wake up freezing because all the covers are on the fucking floor? Not even on her. She just threw them all on the fucking ground. She doesn't want them on the bed, so fuck me, I guess. That's how it goes. Well, fuck that shit. I love waking up alone. I'm going to have it in my next prenup that my wife cannot fall asleep in my bed under any circumstances. She can sleep on the couch or her bed or the backyard or wherever she wants, but not with me. Not my bed. So, no, sir, waking up alone is not the reason I hate waking up, and you are an asshole for saying that. Enjoy the rest of the show. The real reason I hate waking up is cell phones. Oh. Yes, cellular oh. telephones. That's uh-huh. right. I said it. I don't like cell phones when I'm trying to wake up. Let me tell you a little secret. I'm Gen X. We're the last motherfuckers to grow up before cell phones, and we hated being in bed. Nothing to do in bed. It was boring as shit. But now you got a cell phone. So if I wake up at 9, I'm in bed until noon watching pimple-popping videos on TikTok. I've never even had a pimple. Why am I watching this shit? Because it's fucking there. I've wasted entire weekends ordering food, not changing clothes, not showering, just living in my bed, scrolling through slime videos. I'm one of the greatest athletes in the world in fucking history. And I'm mesmerized into paralysis by dogs pressing buttons to tell their owners they have to take a shit. (laughs) That's why I don't like waking up. I already know whatever I got planned is going to get demolished by a guy doing mediocre paint drip art. (sighs) And that's not how I want to spend my morning. I like to wake up, get in a solid workout, get the blood pumping, make me feel better. And hitting the gym gives me a chance to do my new thing. I call it the sauna king. I mentioned earlier that I like pissing people off now. Well, I also like making shit awkward as fuck. Just give somebody a moment that they'll wonder about for the rest of their lives. So when I go in the sauna, I hold fucking court. No headphones, no music. I don't even sit down. I stand right in the middle of the sauna, naked, just cock out, (laughs) making extreme eye contact with everybody in there. Make sure the mood is weird. Then I launch into a story. Could be about football. Could be about where I ate lunch yesterday. Doesn't matter. All that matters is that Tom Brady is standing naked in a sauna telling you a story. (laughs) Now you ain't going nowhere. This could be a a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. You're already thinking about how you'll be able to tell this story for the rest of your life, but you got to see how it ends, and it never does. Because when the sauna king starts a story, the sauna king don't stop. I keep these motherfuckers in that steam room until they start getting lightheaded, eyes rolling back in their head, tongues hanging out of their mouths from dehydration. I've been in thousands of saunas in my life. My sauna stamina is off the fucking charts. I'm going to outlast you every time. And if someone does have the stones to get up and leave, I make them give me a hug first. Oh, God. Literally block the door and say, it was great meeting you. Put out my arms and force you to go sweaty chest to sweaty chest. Sometimes I'll just go, you guys mind if I take a piss in here? And I shit you not, nobody ever objects. Oh, my God. So I just let her rip. Hose down the hot rocks, then go back to my story. And that's the Sonic King. You can use that if you want, but I'm not sure it really works for somebody who's not famous. That's the Sonic King. It's a lot of fun. So I technically am employed, and I'm obviously looking for my next career. I know this is my oh. first attempt at stand-up comedy, oh, but I'm liking it so far. It's pretty fun, and it's obviously very fucking easy. But you know what's even easier? Being a DJ. Have you seen this shit? You just show up somewhere, open your laptop, and play songs on Spotify, right? Like, am I missing something here? I always see videos of these motherfuckers with this giant board in front of them. Lights and knobs and shit everywhere, and they act like they're pressing buttons and doing shit. But that's all for show, right? They're just acting busy. A lot of times all that shit in front of them isn't even plugged into anything. Now, that's the job I want, just fake, like you're good at it until people figure out how shitty you are. Actually, I guess I already had that job. It was my last season with Tampa Bay. Oh, my God. Bucks fans, I know you're out there. That one was for you. Actually, you know what the hardest part about being a DJ is? Picking your name. 
All the big DJs have these weird fucking names. Tisto, Diplo, Kygo, Alesso, Marshmallow. You know who already has a great DJ name? Tebow. He was a shitty quarterback, but with a name like that, he would crush as a DJ. I'm joking. Me and Tim Tebow are great friends. He's here tonight. <laughs> They're all there. Remember when yeah. you got drafted and you called me up to ask for advice about navigating the NFL? You remember what I told you? I said, don't play against me. Uh, those were good times. <laughs> but for real, you know what my DJ name would be? It would be Tom fucking Brady. Are you kidding me? I got one of the most recognizable names in the world. It's a brand unto itself. You think I'm going to change it to Turbo or Verbo or Mango or Tango or Pepto or Klepto or Crypto or Hippo or Zippo or Bippo or some other clown ass shit just because I'm playing Spotify <laughs> songs in a club now? Not ah, ah. a fucking chance. Ah. Tom Brady for life, motherfucker. Tom can I get Brady. a Tom Bomb? Yes, I can. Tom Boom. Bomb. I constantly yeah. get asked how I was so good at football for so long. The answer is pretty simple, really. It boils down to one thing. Karate. That's correct. I'm talking about the ancient Japanese martial arts system. <laughs> I couldn't let anyone know this while I was playing, but now that I'm retired for good, I can reveal that I am a 10th degree black belt in Shotokan karate, and I would use my karate expertise to deliver short, powerful, and obviously illegal strikes to opposing <laughs> players' weak points in every game. <laughs> Somebody busts through the line, looks like they're going to sack me, chop to the head. <clears throat> I get flushed out of the pocket and have to run for a few yards. A linebacker's coming right for me, chop to the head. One of my own players is popping off on the sideline, blaming somebody else for their fuck up, chopped to the head. <laughs> I was so fast with my chops that refs never saw them. Never got flagged for it once. Hell, the people I was chopping didn't even know what was happening most of the time. I remember being in a meeting with head. Belichick once. Just me and him in his office. Oh God. He's trying to lay some bullshit at my feet about I made the wrong play call in the fourth quarter of a meaningless regular season game. And he was right. That particular time, it was 100% my fault. Didn't care. Didn't want to listen to his bullshit. Gave him a chop to the head. <laughs> Belichick went down like a ton of bricks. Woke up the next morning. Didn't even remember the meeting. Now I know what you're thinking, Tom. Did those head chops result in any permanent damage? The short answer is I think so. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm responsible for most, if not all, of the CTE currently in the NFL. <laughs> Something like that might weigh heavy on a normal person's conscience. Jesus. But I'm a champion, and I realize that karate chopping people in the head and giving them repeated traumatic brain injuries that will have devastating long-term effects on the rest of their lives is just the price I got to pay to be on top. Seven Super oh, Bowls, people. It was worth it. I'd do it again. Don't hate the player. Karate definitely helped me in the NFL, but you know what would be even better than karate on the football field? Being a vampire. But, Tom, what kind of vampire would you be? There are a bunch of different kinds of vampires now. There's old-ass vampires like Count Dracula. There's young-ass vampires like Twilight. There's badass-ass vampires ass. like Underworld. So what kind would I be? To answer that question, we got to answer another question. What kind of vampire would be the best at football? <laughs> I know it's crazy. I, now I sound like a madman, but let's just calm uh, it down and take this God, seriously dude. for a second. <clears throat> Ride with me here. We got some data. We can zero okay. this down. We already seen a bunch of Draculas. We seen Draculas that can turn into bats. Not that helpful in a game situation. We seen Draculas <laughs> that can do hypnosis. Sounds pretty good, but they got to stare into somebody's eyes for a few seconds to really get them. And two seconds in the NFL is the difference between a win and a loss. That's true. Maybe the best football skill we've seen from Dracula is that this motherfucker can move. I mean, this <laughs> man is fast, like can teleport, basically. So if he has the ball, you are not catching him, period. But I don't know if he can throw a pass. And a quarterback who just scores rushing touchdowns isn't a real quarterback. That's a running back or maybe a wide receiver. Fuck, that's what Dracula is. He's a wide receiver. <laughs> you imagine me throwing to count Dracula? <laughs> Fucking 2,000-yard games, just blowouts. And that would be fun, but I wouldn't want to be Dracula. Got to be some type of vampire that can play quarterback. We also have oh. some evidence on the underworld-type vampires. They're always in black leather. Look much cooler than Dracula. They're always fighting against big criminal vampire organizations that want to take over the world and shit like that. They use guns and swords, and they use karate. So I already got a lot in common with these <laughs> kinds like of him, vampires. Yeah. They're super strong and fast. Not as fast as Dracula, but, like, way oh, better man. than a human being. And their eye hand is on another level. Like, they can see bullets and dodge them <laughs> and shit like that. So I feel very confident that they could scramble in the pocket and throw a 70-yard bomb. <laughs> Unfortunately, they got a problem. No day games. They literally burn up in the sun. Bye-bye. <laughs> So to avoid experiencing the true death, you'd have to miss most of the season. So no thank you. So where does that leave us? We really only got one choice here, and that is to be a Twilight vampire, which Ugh. is fucking shitty. Yes, they can go in the sun, and the only thing that happens is they sparkle. No spontaneous combustion. So you can play day games, a.k.a. the Super Bowl. But of all the vampires, the Twilight vampire is the only one we've actually seen play sports. And can they're I fucking try your terrible. Gandalf? You remember this shit? 
In the first twilight, these Seattle-ass vampires, the Cullens, roll out to the middle of this clearing in the forest to play baseball. They're all wearing little baseball outfits. They got like a $5 garage sale aluminum bat and one ball, yes, a single fucking baseball, just no need for any other equipment. And it's lightning and thunder everywhere. And they tell Bella, oh yeah, we can only play baseball when it thunders because when we hit the ball, it's so loud, people would be like, what the fuck is going on in that forest? So at first you're like, okay, maybe they came to play. Maybe they're hardcore athletes. They're creating loud noises because they hit the ball so hard and they brought one ball, one bat, no catcher's gear, not even fucking gloves. <laughs> That's some old school hard nose type shit. I'm okay. in. Let's see where this goes. Then it goes right down the shitter. The pitcher is like doing ballet or some shit as she pitches, like oh, pointing man. her toe and shit. Just can tell immediately this vampire does not know how to play baseball at all, just fucking faking it completely. <laughs> then she throws what looks like maybe a 50 mile an hour attempt at a fastball. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was hitting home runs off 70 miles an hour in the sixth grade. Oh, then gosh. the batter hits the ball. Oh, Again, man. they supposedly hit the ball so hard it sounds oh, like fuck. thunder. This ball goes 250 feet, maybe 300. There's not oh, enough man. pop on it to go over the fence at most oh, high schools shit. in America. <laughs> And then Edward okay. Cullen, this is Robert Pattinson, the main vampire. He's playing center field. He gets a fucking terrible jump on the ball and has to use his vampire speed to track the ball down <laughs> and just barely makes what amounts to a routine catch in deep center. Honest evaluation of Edward Cullen's athletic ability. He'd be like a very good NFL player, not the best by a long shot. So I wouldn't want to be a Twilight vampire, but I got no other choice, I guess. You ever seen somebody <laughs> oh eat something gosh. in such a weird way that you couldn't stop watching? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, no. right? Eating something with their hands that we all know you eat with a fork, like spaghetti or something, mm. scrambled eggs, or somebody who eats a banana with the peel on, just bites into the whole thing. I seen some weird eaters in my life, but I saw a guy the other day that fucking took the cake. Huh. I'm in Arby's, huh? just unwrapped my first roast beef and cheddar. I bring it up to my mouth, about to sink those teeth into the first bite, and then I look up and see this guy with an order of mozzarella sticks. Okay. I don't know how many times I've seen somebody eat a mozzarella stick, conservatively. I'd say I've seen somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand mozzarella sticks consumed by other people. I know the variations. Sometimes you get an early biter. We all know the mozzarella <laughs> inside the stick is like lava when you first get it. The mozzarella. Early hot. biter. You gotta wait. Dude. Maybe even poke a few holes in it with a fork. Early biter doesn't give a shit about this. Early biter just tears into the stick as soon as it hits the table. Early biter has no regard for personal safety. Early biter gets third degree burns about the roof of his mouth and tongue. <laughs> or sometimes you get a cheese Early sucker. Early biter. The cheese sucker is a little gross, but not that weird. <laughs> not that uncommon. Everybody in this room has seen a cheese sucker at least once. If you're laughing too hard at this joke, we all know you're a cheese sucker now. You psychotic fucks leave the fried outer crust behind. Just suck out the cheese. Leave a basket of hollowed out husks. Cheese it's sucker. a waste, but fine, whatever. Maybe you got a gluten allergy or a dietary restriction. There are legitimate reasons why you might have to suck all the hot mots out of a mozzarella stick and leave behind a fresh shell like a used condom. But I cannot put together any kind of a plausible explanation for how I saw this man eating a basket of mozzarella sticks at Arby's. This man ate the sticks with intention. This man ate the sticks as though time did not exist. This man ate the sticks as though no one else was watching. But someone was watching. Me, I was abso fucking lutely watching. This man brings a stick up to his mouth before his ass even hits the chair. So I'm like, easy, early biter. Going to get burned up. Makes sense. Oh, boy. Only problem is this man has a slow stick hand. Early biters have fast <laughs> stick hands. This man has a slow stick hand. Yes, the stick's at his mouth as soon as he sits down. But he had to start that move at the counter. But oh, cheese man. suckers have slow stick hands sometimes. Must be a cheese sucker. I can All see right. that for him. <clears throat> then this man does something I've never witnessed anyone do while eating a mozzarella stick. This man nibbles the tiniest bite I've ever seen taken. I had a pet rat when I was a kid, <laughs> Dominic. And Dominic took some small fucking bites. This man's bite is smaller. He bites off just enough to make a hole in the fried part, exposing the mozz, not like a cheese sucker. Cheese suckers always bite off the entire tip, like a cigar in the movies. That way they can suck the cheese out. But this man clearly wants it to stay in. This man threads the hot mots through the little hole he made. Hot mots. Holds the hot mots in his teeth and simultaneously pulls the stick away from his mouth and pulls his head away from the stick. Oh. The result is a three-foot-long string of golden mots cooling in the Arby's air conditioning <laughs> stretched from his hand to his mouth. I've never seen anything like that. Don't know that I ever will. Oh. Looked like a fucking angel wing. And then this man does not move his hand. Just keeps it there holding the stick like it was designed to only do that. Like God literally said, I'm going to make a man with a perfect Arby's mozzarella stick holding hand. 
Then this man, this beautiful man, closes his eyes and proceeds to eat the moths in a way that I wish I could be loved. Oh, man. He is gentle to the moths and kind to the moths and funny to the moths and charming to the moths. This man takes his time with the moths. This man makes the moths feel seen. Small, easy bites. Never a reckless slurp or raising of the stick over the head. Oh, no way. Gosh. He this makes man knows the moths what he's feel doing seen. with the moths. And once he gets the stick back to his mouth, this man does it all over again. I watched this man eat a basket of Arby's mozzarella sticks over the course of three and a half hours, just fucking mesmerized. <laughs> and when he finishes the last one, I have to know where he learned to eat moths like that. So I go, excuse me, I have to know where did you learn to do that with an Arby's mozzarella stick, Dad? You know what this man said to me? He goes, none of your goddamn business. I bought this man six houses, and he won't tell me why he eats moths like Jason Momoa. This is my old man, my 12th man, my yes man, my good man, my bad man, my bad oh man, my hatchet oh man, no. my con man, my elder statesman, my every man, my soul man, my family man, my gentleman, my straight man, my funny man, my money man, my rain man, my Cinderella man, my company man, my garbage man, my milk man, my me medicine man, my snow man, my straw man, uh, my bionic man, my rocket man, my self man, man, my he man, my bat man, like, my ice man, my legit spider man, imagine my if a man, human my being was doing this. Man, my hard man, my post yeah, man, my point man, my middle man, my main man, my leading man, like my to this leg degree. man, I'm my sure ass man, my it's approach man, my something like this. Man, my nah, dude. Man, my Carlin had some shit like this. Man, my man like dog. listing my man of yeah. things yeah. like my super staccato that was rehearsed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not like my this, dude. This is like fucking a minute long. My man with two brains. My man in the iron There's a Steve Martin reference, I think. My man in the box. My man in black. My man in the moon. My man from Mars. My man at arms. My man of war. My man of God. My man and wife. My man in the street. My man down, my man a few words, my man of his word, my man called horse, my man for all seasons, my one man band, my one man show, my big man on campus, my no man's land, my dead man walking, my right man for the job, my father. I love my father, I truly do. He's had an enormous impact on my life and even on this very show tonight. Shit, dude. I called the show It's Too Easy. And I've said that phrase a few times tonight. I imagine most of you were oh, like, man. Jesus, what an asshole. But the truth is, I don't think it's too easy. That's just a phrase I say when I'm nervous. When I'm scared, I won't do a good job. Hmm. And it's a phrase my dad taught me when I was in junior high. I was about to start my first game at quarterback, and I told him I couldn't go out there. What if I mess up? And he said, Tom, when you're nervous about something, just say to yourself, it's too easy, and then whatever it is will be. That's something I've taken with me throughout life, and if I leave you with one thing before I go, I want it to be that. No matter what you're facing, just tell yourself it's too easy, and it will be. Say it with me. It's too easy. It's actually, too easy. I think it's I want to leave you with another piece of advice he gave me. It's actually a little better. This is something he told me a little over a year ago. I was up against a tough spot, and he told me, Tom, I think you should play one more season with Tampa Bay. <laughs> Bucks Nation, you knew I was going to go out with a bang. Can I get a Tom bomb? Yes, I can. Boom. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Oh, my Hope God. to see you again soon. Oh. I had a blast. Get home safe. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, everyone, Dude, for watching and listening to It's Too Easy, a simulated think... hour-long Tom Brady stand-up comedy special. <sighs> I will use the data I've collected from this simulated hour-long stand-up comedy special to make the next one even better. Oh, my God. Until then, call me Dude Z. What in the fuck? Yeah, it was interesting listening to it. It was like you kind of had to t like take yourself out of it sometimes to give yourself like a pause from it. Like you had to, at least for me, I had to kind of like, you know, every 10 minutes or so, just like take a little 30 second break from listening to the fucking droning of it because it was so fucking like, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There were parts where I literally uh, like fell off the back of the truck bed. Like yeah. it, this vehicle is speeding down the road. Yeah. And at some, at, at certain points, I literally tumbled out of the back of the truck and down the road a bit. The, it's, the cadence is immediately yes. one of the funniest things about it, but then uh, it, it, becomes, it becomes just normal in a way that's completely fucking bizarre. But it like, gives you no time to laugh. Yeah. You'll be like laughing yeah. at a punchline, and because you're laughing, you'll miss the setup to the next fucking joke because I mean, it's just so fucking relentless. That's like what we're doing oh, here. As we're, oh. as we're listening to it, I'm going like, Oh, there's no real, you know, time to break it down or whatever. Not that I thought we would be, you know, breaking it down necessarily, but it's like watching. This was like, I mean, this is actually a good thing to be doing with the PODs because it's like, oh, it's just like watching a fucking special with your friends. The the pace of it, it would be interesting in a comedy club or in your living room yeah. when you're watching that comedy special. What would happen to an audience? Dude, I that don't is know. not allowed to to laugh. Yeah, because 
I don't know, every single stand-up comedian I've ever seen, you know, allows, allows obviously for, for this to happen. Even the ones that are very by rote, in my opinion, yeah, you know what totally. I mean? Like, like a Stephen Wright is going to take like a long pause yeah. after a joke, maybe longer than other guys. Mm -hmm. And there are guys like we mentioned during, uh, during this, we were like, you're like, oh, it's like Henny Youngman. Yeah, you know, take my wife, please, and just da 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 da. -da, -da. <laughs> yeah, there were some things in there that were like literally a sentence yeah. to a punchline, and then just right on to the next thing that could be a big concept yeah. where he's talking for like multiple minutes about. Well, it. but but that's the thing. Like you, you'll see stand up com comics go like, they'll be like da 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 da. They'll finish a joke and then say, "Hey, what's going on with that so and so?" And then, yeah. but then they'll take a, a pause, uh, you know, and and. and uh, get a laugh uh, on both things, but then, then continue. Yeah. Tom Brady does not allow you to laugh at the last thing, at which point yes. it begins the next thing. Exactly. There's no even for that sort of yeah. effect, like here, chew on that for a second. Aren't I bizarre? No, yeah. you fucking don't get to even listen to the show. No quarter. No, <laughs> Fuck you. zero quarter. <laughs> Fuck you. This was, some, this was like Tom Brady wanted to do this. Fuck you yeah. for listening to it. Well, it's, it, <laughs> yeah, it's almost like it's his approach. It, dude, uh, it's like the approach that you would take to a championship game. Yeah, a guy like Tom Leave Brady, it all on the field, fucking just a killer. Like I, I oh man, I I don't, I never that liked great, watching the Patriots, and I hate sports dynasties. So I was not really That's interesting. Into, why, why is that? I just want to see. I just want to see her. What you like, take her though? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That's exact. Now we're getting somewhere. Now you're picking up what I'm laying down. Now you're seeing you didn't things like Taker? the way that I love The Undertaker. Taker is a sports dynasty, dude. He had, what was it, 17 wins in a row? Uh, 21. What was the streak? The streak was 21. 21 wins in a row. 21 that ain't a fucking sports row. dynasty? Then, he w then uh, Brock Lesnar beat him. Then I think he won the next year, and then he lost the yeah, year after that. I'm just that. saying. You do like sports dynasties. No, I, he, well... But here's the thing. Here's here's the thing that I'm getting at is that Tom Brady, I never used to dig him, but at a certain point you have to respect him. And there were a couple Super Bowls there at the end where I was absolutely rooting for him. Right. I was rooting for him with that Tampa Bay one. What an incredible fucking story. Sorry. Yeah. You know, like people will hate on on an elite athlete, but it's actually like, I don't know, I'm uh, you might have felt the same way, but I remember being in high school going, uh, it's incredible to be alive during michael jordan's run oh it, totally it, it's, dude. and to be at the age that we were at yes like, you're in high school watching the game with your buddies you grew up <clears throat> excuse me mm -hmm. oh, too much water from my big dudesy pals of dudesy stickers yep. yeah at pals of dudesy <clears throat> uh, but here's what i'm saying but michael jordan was also MC. like a different oh, hold on well, a different dude. deal dude he was like electric hold and on. his like fame and who he was as a celebrity was just like it is different than anybody who has existed since yes. in my opinion yes but tom brady's in that rarefied air he's bigger than he's now he's uh, my fi my favorite quarterback of all time is joe montana yeah he's bigger than montana i used to always say no nah, he's not as cold as montana that was his hero uh, sure. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Like legit. Okay. Brady's, yeah. Well, that makes fucking sense because Joe Montana was relentless. And the thing about an athlete like that is even if you don't like him after a while, you have to respect him. Mm -hmm. That's what the undertaker brings to the game. Uh, it, you know, it's like, it's undeniable. He's bringing that effort to stand up comedy. Yeah. That's what dudesy is like, Oh, this is what would happen yeah. if Tom Brady, went and did stand up it would be a relentless assault that you at the end you feel like you've lost in yeah, a way it's like he's going to outwork every other stand up yeah, comedian yeah, you know yeah. you always hear that from like championship yeah. of like i worked harder than everybody yeah. else it's like Fuck undeniable yeah. he's doing things in this that human beings cannot do those lists yes. cannot be performed by human beings well you know it's like sports are a lot of people say like this is this is it's a true meritocracy. Mm -hmm. You have to be the best at it, literally. Um, I think that uh, stand up comedy is like one of those things. I mean, it's close to it because it's like you just kind of have to be hilarious. Although there's all sorts of factors that get someone sure. to be a famous entertainer of of any kind. But it's still like if you completely suck, it, people aren't gonna right. gonna laugh. But Tom Brady 
bringing like uh, that attitude of like, yeah. no, it is a fucking meritocracy, and that meritocracy is based on effort. Yeah, pure fucking rage fueled effort. <laughs> yeah, and anger. It, God, it's so mad at some of those things. But it, but you're laughing. Waking your up ass with off. his wife. Fuck that. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. It was great though, dude. Uh, thank you, dudesy, for making this and making us listen. To yeah, it. thanks, D. Holy shit. And, and thank thanks everybody you. for watching. Yeah, with thanks us. for chilling with us and uh, and uh, and watching the show. Yeah. That is a tremendous Gandalf, I will say. Thank you. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then.